Uh, we're here today talking to Bill Witchihan, senior instructor at the Takamusu Aikido Association. I was living in Japan and uh, a friend of mine uh, from a language class was taking uh, judo over at the Kotokan and I said, uh, gee, you know, that might be fun. <laughs> so uh, I didn't really want to get into an art that demanded I train for competition. I wasn't, wasn't all that interested in doing the, the, the competitive route, trying to win trophies, etc. Yeah. And Aikido seemed to fit the bill. So I went to the Aikido dojo one day, walked in, and the first person I saw sitting there was this old man in the office, and I knew that that was the founder, or sensei. And I decided that right then and there that this is what I wanted to do. So the woman who was behind the counter said, uh, you know, may I help you? And I said, I want to learn Aikido. And she said, oh, come back when there's a class. We have a class at three. So uh, I had to I had to go back and watch a class. Uh, fortunately, there were some uh, Americans in there, and we were talking afterwards. And pretty soon, uh, well, Sensei came out, and he uh, gave a little talk and demonstration. Uh, I don't know whether it was for my benefit or not, but uh, I certainly uh, got more enthusiastic as I saw this. And we, uh, I signed up right then and there. What do you remember of O-Sensei and his teachings in those years? He had a short temper. <laughs> uh, but actually, actually, he, it was, it was a, a privilege to, to be in his classes, to know that here was a man who had developed these techniques and uh, uh, was, you were able to learn from him firsthand. So he... It was hard to understand him because he, he spoke in uh, a, a dialect of Japanese and he also had false teeth that he didn't wear during practice. So uh, it was difficult to understand and not only that, uh, I didn't speak much Japanese and uh, he was usually talking about some very philosophical terms that I wouldn't know the vocabulary to anyway. So that was a, uh, it was difficult. And even when I talked to my friend, I'd be sitting there and say to the person next to me, what's he saying, what's he saying? And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we just, had to, we just had to really watch what he was doing. Uh, he, was, he was a very kind man at times, but you know, there, was, there were some times when he would get really frustrated and yell at us, but, but that's okay, that's part of the training. He didn't really mean it on a long-term basis, you know. And eventually, since you went uh, to Iwama and affiliated with uh, Morihiro Saito Shihan. Yes. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, Saito Sensei was teaching in uh, Tokyo on Sunday mornings. And a friend of mine, after I'd been training about, I don't know, a month or so, suggested that I go to his class on Sunday because he was an interesting teacher. And I went, to the, I went to the first class and I uh, uh, trained the class and I walked away and I said, well, that was okay, but nothing special. But then I kept going to the classes. And once I, got, once I uh, started going to his classes, I began to see a different way of teaching than what the other teachers did. The other teachers were kind of random in pre presenting their uh, uh, techniques. Saito Sensei had a... Uh, a systematic approach to Aikido, which I appreciate. And it was in Iwama um, when you started going there that you learned the weapons forms? When I went out to Iwama, he showed me uh, Jokata. That was it. And then I came back to the United States. I was back here about uh, two years. That's all I did was Jokata. Then when I went back over, he showed me Suburi. And uh, when his students were training in the dojo and they were training in weapons, he used to kick me out. And he wouldn't let me watch what they were doing. So uh, I got, I, under, I, I received the, uh, the weapons training from him 
over a period of uh, four or five years, I guess. Only a little bit at a time. And you were one of the first, if not the first, foreigner to train in the Iwama Dojo? I believe so. And I know there were some other people that went out there, but uh, uh, I guess I was the first one to train with Saito Sensei. And, you know, actually, I actually asked him formally to become his deshi. And there must have been some interesting experiences that happened to you in those years being one of the relatively few foreigners there? That's true. The first one was the first night I spent at the dojo. And uh, um, my training partners uh, were, <laughs> were kind of kidding me. They said, well, watch out for ghosts. <laughs> Excuse me, watch out for ghosts. We have ghosts in the dojo. And I said, oh, sure, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, I slept right in the middle of the dojo, not in the, one of the side rooms. So at night, about, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, I had this very, very vivid dream of Osensei walking around my phone, looking at me. And I woke up and there was this feeling in the dojo there. I mean, this, it was kind of scary. <laughs> and after that, I didn't laugh anymore when they said, oh, there are ghosts in the dojo. <laughs> they're not bad, they're just ghosts. <laughs> You've been uh, training Aikido now for 50 years? 49. 49, 49 years. 49 plus. Um, and so what have been the, the hallmarks of your practice that have kept you focused for all this time? That's a good question. Uh, you know, your focus, your focus in anything changes over time. The, as you gain experience, uh, you know, at first you're, you're trying to, to learn how to walk, uh, basically. And then you learn how to run, and then you learn, you know, you learn how to drive a car. You're <laughs> so, so as you progress through life, you're, 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 the, you focus on different things. But the one thing that always impressed me about Aikido was how varied the throws were, for instance. How, uh, Osensei said there were approximately uh, 3,000 techniques. I don't know that many by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, I, I was just always, I, I, I always looked forward to going to training because I would, I would see a technique I'd never seen before. And sensei would let himself get wrapped up in some position and then just make a hip, quick hip movement, get out of it, and you go, wow, <laughs> why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Well, you know, when you don't have the experience, everything is wonderful. That's why kids like Christmas, right? <laughs> Aikido is still a relatively young art. What do you think differentiates it from other traditional Asian martial arts? Well, I don't know about, I don't know about the art itself. Uh, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is the art has to relate to me and how I look at it. And I, like I say, I really appreciated the fact that it's not, a, it's not an art where there's a lot of competition. Uh, it's an art where you have to develop your interest in Aikido and keep it up and keep it going and find something that um, can keep you latched into Aikido. And gradually it becomes part of your system. You're, becomes part of your body. I can't say when that happens. It just happens over time. Uh, Sensei, what uh, advice do you have for new students and new teachers in Aikido? New students, first of all, are, are uh, usually, usually uh, everybody ha is tentative when they come in. They don't know what's going to happen to them. Uh, it could be, you know, they, they see people flying around the dojo or falling hard or, or tapping the mat because the technique is painful. And so everybody has some kind of built-in fears of, of what's going to happen. But <clears throat> the more you get exposed to the art and, and uh, realize that the senior people in the dojo are there to take care of you and not hurt you, not, you know, 
put your head into the mat, that uh, you begin to feel more and more comfortable with what you, you know, the level you're at, and, and uh, more and more comfortable with trying new things. So, and for instructors, that was the second part of the question, right? Instructing is not what it appears to be. The, everybody, everybody when they get up to be like Shodan or so, and says, I want to go out, I want to go out and, and teach. I want to show people what I know. But showing people what you know and doing the right technique and being able to interpret the technique for different people with different ages and body styles and uh, uh, different ways of moving, that's difficult. And that takes, that takes a lot of time on the mat uh, just as a student in order to be able to go up to somebody else who's training and say, you know, if you move your foot a little bit over this way, you could do a better technique. Sensei, thank you. thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Are there any other remarks you'd like to make? Just keep on training. That's, that's the big key. Uh, I tell you, the other uh, few years ago, my wife and I took a cruise to Alaska. And uh, every night we sat down to dinner with different people. And some of these people were using canes and walkers and, and uh, uh, motor scooters to get around the, the ship, you know? And they were in their 50s. And I was really taken aback. My wife was too. She doesn't train Aikido. But, but uh, when, you, when you train, Aikido keeps you, you may not, uh, you know, it keeps you fit. Your body may age and sag in certain spots or, or you, may, uh, you may, may even gain weight. But, Aikido seems to keep people fit because Aikido works on the core, strength of the body. So, that's important. Thank you very much, Sensei. You're very welcome. Thank you for your time. <laughs>